Morning Show. Good day, people of the world. How are you guys doing? It's been a while since I've said that. Um, yeah, it's the Game Time Gazette. This is your host, Isaiah Aneni. You know, I'm welcomed by my brother here, you know, uh, my bro, Paul Aneni. And, um, you know, as the Euros are starting, NBA is winding down, NHL is winding down. I'm back. I'm back. You know, the elephants out the room. I am back. You know, got another episode ready to explain everything that's happened these last few months and everything. But for today, we're going to start off with the competition that started off today. I mean, we just finished watching what, you know, I only watched the first half. My bro probably watched the whole match. What'd you watch? You watch the whole match? Yeah. No, nah, I only watched the, the first half. Match, the whole match. Yeah. yeah nah, that's Germany against Scotland. The Euros 2024 began today. Um, and um, what a match it was. What a match it was. I mean, yo, give me your thoughts on the match, man. Give me your thoughts. Nah, Germany dominated the full thing still um, for the full 90. It was just Germany, Germany. Surprisingly, I was surprised. I didn't think Germany were going to be this good. But they were really good. Even their their substitutions, Fulkrug and Emery Can, they, they came on, scored. They were dominating. And they were talking about how it's crew stat is the reason that they're dominating low key. It looked like it. Vert and Siala they all look motivated, they all look excited. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, now for me, I don't even know. I expected Scotland to come out with a better bang. I expected Scotland to come out with a better I don't know what better style of play. You, you know, defensively there was nothing there. Attacking wise, geez Louise, there was nothing attacking wise there for Scotland. Yeah, Germany played well. I can't lie, they did play well. You know, in the first forty-five, just pressure. You know, in that front third, pressure, pressure, pressure. Havertz played real well. Yeah, Musiala, Ritz played really well. Gunda, Gunda, Gunda on. You know, that Barcelona boy. And, you know, Musiala, Ritz. Of course, they play with those are future Barcelona players right there too. So. You know, that's the quality you, you, you want to see from them boys. But for me, all I'm thinking is watching this match and I'm thinking, no way Mbappe said the Euros are harder than the World Cup. <laughs> There's no way, fam. There is no absolute way because you're watching this match and you're thinking to yourself, man, even if this is, who was the surprise team in the last World Cup? Is it Albania? No, it was in Albania. Yeah, in the World Cup 2022. Who's Morocco. that? Morocco. Hey, Morocco that made it all the way to the what, quarters in the semis. Or what are we even talking about? Scotland wouldn't they wouldn't they wouldn't come close. Even Saudi Arabia, fam. Even Saudi beat Argentina. You know what I'm saying? I don't for me, I never took precedent in Mbappe's Mbappe's, you know, opinion. Cause that's how I'm gonna say it's opinion at the end of the day. He, he, you can't, you know, there's a lot of opinions that you can't yeah, really, opinion, yeah. you can't really boast on, but I, it is his opinion. No cap. But at the end of the day, we're looking at all these other countries out there in the world. And you're telling me that the Euros, just Europe is the hardest continent to play. I mean, come on, that's that. There's no way. There's no way, you know, because this, this could be classified as one of Germany's what are we talking about? This is one of Germany's best teams. No. Of course not. That's what I'm saying. That's what I'm saying. It's not even this is this is one of Germany's I, 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 wouldn't, I wouldn't say mid team, but we've seen better Germany sides, and this is the first time they've ever scored five goals in a Euro match. Because it's the, the, the quality isn't there. The quality is just not there. They've never done it before. Germany. It's big boy Germany's from past Brazil at, at Brazil's backyard. And we're talking about a Brazil team Seven that times. talking about a Brazil team that and I was a crazy match still. <laughs> still yeah. to this day. I don't know how Brazil lost seven, nothing. That was embarrassing, you know. I was actually backyard. That was actually crazy still. It's because of the Neymar injury too, though. You, you you look at the different factors that really that really got in there. And then you come okay. But seven nothing was crazy though. But at the end of the day, you know, to wrap it up a little bit, I mean Mbappe. Opinion, opinion, opinion is an opinion at the end of the day. But we're looking at, you know, the World Cup for me. Is, there's no way that you can, I mean, Saudi's winning games. Uh, Morocco's making it to semifinals and, or quarterfinals. No, semis. I surely made it to the semis. You know, and you look at the past world champions, the World Cup champions. They've all been European all the way before this Argentina team, all the way to the, what, 2002? 
the 2002 Zambian European film. Take it, I think as you know. Yeah, and I mean it's been a it's been a quality run here from European teams. You know, Italy had their run early early 2000s. There they had their run Zidane, all of that, and then obviously. Yeah, now nah, all that foolishness. And last thing I wanted to say is because I just seen this TSN advert here from the TSN. You know, they're advertising this next week match against Canada versus Argentina, and they're coming Canada versus the greatest of all time, which he is. He very well is Messi. He is. But man, it's not even oh Canada versus Argentina. It's Canada against Messi. And I mean, I guess, I guess this brother just said Garnacho's a superstar. I mean, no way. <laughs> Argentina team is poverty. So, yo, what do you think about them saying the NBA Finals? This is one of the worst NBA. And do you watch the NHL as well? You watch hockey? Nah, nah, eh? because they're saying the streets are saying. You go on social media, you go on Twitter, you go on Instagram. Streets are saying this is the worst finals combination of sports ever. And they're saying the 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 extra debate on that is that this puts it to bed that the nfl is the king of all entertainment in sports which nah, i'm not gonna lie to you i agree I with that right? i think it's just i think it's just boston are just way better than mavericks it's not even like it was a i don't know where people got the idea that mavericks had a chance you can testify i said boston in five you yeah. can testify to it right like yeah no, you boston right. five. Did stuff, i don't know yeah. where people thought mavericks had a chance this boston team they have five guys that could get you 20 it's it's insane that five guys that could get you 20 and play defense like it, it was a mismatch from the beginning i don't know where the narrative came or uh, it probably came from the fact that people were saying that luca and Kyrie were the best backcourt yeah that so was this, foolishness when it was first coming out and that's you see i should have had a podcast on there too and yeah. uh, an episode because that's yeah. true though it, it was i mean boston has the better team for me my argument but was that for, mm -hmm. for hockey though it's mm -hmm. um it's a bit surprising because I, I know Edmonton have uh, McDavid. McDavid. Bro, they have McDavid. Like, they have Drysidle as well. Drysidle is like a, I mean, top five, top five in this position as well. Like you're yeah. talking, yeah, McDavid's number one in the NHL, but yeah, Drysidle, like they have some good players on that team too. Mm -hmm. Like the the argument before for Edmonton was they couldn't even make the playoffs, much less make the finals. They, all right, boom, they make the finals after they make the playoffs for the first time in how long? And then, yeah, they just get there. And Florida, it, yeah, they just look outmatched by Florida. You know, and for me, though, for the argument's sake, though, because I want to be devil's advocate on this. And I want to do, because, not even devil's advocate, because I do agree. The NFL is way more entertaining. And basketball is my favorite sport, too. It's just NFL is king when it comes to entertainment. I'm looking at Patrick Mahomes and the Chiefs. Patrick Mahomes, head and shoulders better than any other quarterback in the league, fam. He always finds a I way mean, to do it. The conference finals were pretty yeah. entertaining. Oh, for, Western, for the NBA? Yeah. Western Conference? I mean, it was all right. Still, it was all right. You know, Anthony Edwards against Luka. But nothing comes up more than like, I don't even, bro, NFL playoffs, there's no rival. Compared to like, if I'm comparing it, just because of the one game, yo, you missed, you're out. The one, bro, when the Eagles went on their Super Bowl run, too, even though the Eagles had the best team in the NFL that year, too, so I was pretty confident we were able to do it. But because Carson Wentz went down, this and that, fam, Nick Foles, our backup quarterback, came and brought us to the court, to the, to the Super Bowl and won us the chip. In a league where we had Tom Brady, we versed Tom Brady in the, in the Super Bowl, too. It was a crazy game, crazy high-scoring game. It was a crazy game that Tom Brady, Tom Brady hates the Eagles. He mm -hmm. hates the Eagles fans. But at the end of the day, I bring that up to say that in NFL, the parody is like, it's like butter. It's, it's there. Like it's, it's easy to churn and find it because at the end of the day, it's too much between all these other teams. You know what I'm saying? Like, you know, you, you, you bring it up to the NFL, I mean, to the NBA, NHL, and it's like, NHL, they 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 had that glorifying of oh yeah they're the best they're the best league uh, for the playoffs for a long time, but there's been a lot of duds. You know we're talking three nothing, we're talking uh, you know one nothings because it's just no scores up until the overtime. That's happened a few times in this playoffs too. NFL, it doesn't happen. It don't happen. Every game is important. There's only 17. You need every game. You need every win you can to make the playoffs. And then when you're in the playoffs, 
every single play is important. There's not game two, game three. There's only one game. There's only one game. See why the NFL has made the money it's made, man. Yeah, for those points. Yeah, that's true. That's true. You know, like nothing really even, you know, on that. No, yeah, I completely agree. I don't really have, you know, yeah. this is the, <laughs> yeah, but, uh, you know, on, on, on everything on that, you know, couple in the NFL, couple in um, the NHL. So you think uh, I, another thing that's been, you know, brought up in the media, this and that on Twitter, everything, they say it's the first time for everything, even though I do not agree. They're saying the Mavs might come back down 3 nothing. Might probably just be the Twitter trolls. I'm not going to lie. Nah, I think it's just people just want something to talk about. You were saying that, that, Some that, hope. uh, wait, who was it? Who is the team that went down 3 nothing in these last? <laughs> was it Minnesota that yeah, went down 3 nothing? Yeah. You were saying Minnesota can come back. And now you're saying Boston, Dallas can't come back 3 nothing nah, against Minnesota. Uh, nah, against Boston. because it's not like, it's not like Dallas were much better than Minnesota, though. Minnesota. They went down three nothing because of like what last minute plays, simple plays. It was a game game two? It was turnovers that they lost because of. Yeah. And man, game three though, you're looking at game three and game three. Luca went down, got fouled out about four or five minutes left in the game. Then you're looking at uh, um, just these missed shots, missed opportunities there from the Dallas Mavericks. If, the, if Luca's in the game, Kyrie doesn't have the ball in his hands at the end of the game. Maybe look, maybe they win that game. Maybe it's two one, not three nothing. So same maybe, thing could apply on this on, on this part on this series. Nah, but it's done. It's, I think I think I think Kyrie, Luca, I think PJ Washington, all them guys they've, they've all checked out. I think they've all checked out mentally. Down three zero is the first time they've all, you know, probably years appreciative that they're in the finals. But yeah, I think they've checked out still. Yeah, we'll have to see on that because for me, and I mean, Kyrie's been part of the, he was, he was the biggest part, in my opinion, of the biggest comeback in NBA Finals history. You know, some other people would attribute it to LeBron just because they're dick riding. Like, that's it. That's that's all you're doing if you're saying it was Brown. It was Kyrie. It was Kyrie at the end of the day. And it was the Robin that really stood up and told Batman that we could do it. Sometimes it takes, you know, a Robin saying, hey, Batman, don't put your head down. We could do it because at the end of the day, that is true. PJ Washington, all them boys. They ain't doing nothing. But if Luca comes 50 piece, 50 piece, 50 piece, 50 piece with Kyrie's 40 piece, just like they did back in the day, him and Braun. We'll see. I don't know. We'll see. I don't know. Mm-hmm. Obviously, I don't I don't think, yeah. Because it's just crazy. Like it's it's a it's a crazy uh hill to climb, especially in the NBA. Three nothing is like a death sentence. I'm not gonna lie. It's mm-hmm. never happened before for a reason, because it's it's too hard. It's too hard for it to happen still. You know, but uh, back on the Euros, though, because I didn't even get your thoughts on the whole tournament. You know, what do you think about, you know, coming into the tournament? You've seen one game. Obviously, the, the home team, Germany, they played really well. Um, obviously, you have to give them that. Five goals, regardless of the opponent, is, is uh, yeah, they were, you know, executed the plan to perfection, right? So what are you thinking about the whole tournament? You know, give me your favorites. Give me your dark horses. Start off on there, still. All right, I'll start off my my predictions with the top scores and stuff. Yeah, yeah. Uh, all right, I'll do the favorites. I think win it. Portugal, Jeez, Portugal eh? will win. <laughs> I think Jeez, eh? top score. No, I think um, yeah, top score will be none other than Cristiano Ronaldo. Jeez, none other than him. <laughs> the player of the tournament will be Bruno Fernandes. Okay, I think he's gonna go crazy. What the hell? It's dick right in Nah, it's not. It's not even like. <laughs> nah, you you watch the play. Bruno coming into this tournament, him and it's him and Mbappe that are that are what uh, five plus goals and assists combined. All right, it's him and Mbappe. So I think I think dark horses. Honestly, I'll give it to Hungary. Watch out for Hungary. Jeez, all right. Anytime I, I've watched Hungary play a, a couple of times past two years mm. they, they they always play organized it's mm-hmm. not like they, they play like a team because it's not like they have the best individual players but they play like a team mm. and yeah for young player of the tournament obviously none other than Yamal I think he's gonna I think he's gonna go crazy I think you have like like maybe two goals and like two assists mm. I think he's gonna go he's gonna he's gonna be good yeah also Spain they might go far Croatia Mm. But yeah, my favorite's Portugal. 
Yeah, favorite yeah. portrait. That's a surprise for me. Not really. And I, I feel like I've seen that a lot on social media these days, bro. Everyone's just hoping Ronaldo gets that one because what is it? Six World Cups or six Euros and five World Cups. No player of the tournaments. One Euro Cup. He didn't even play the final in. Hey, man. They, they have that brother on fraud alert. Still, they have that brother on fraud alert. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, that's, that's the Twitter kids talking. They always try to find something to discredit, you know, one of the greatest to play. That's you know, true, though. Yeah. That's the true. same thing with Messi. Like, they'll find something to try to say Messi did it. it, 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 it that once that was the same about. narrative, though, for Messi right there, that he had no, but Ronaldo does have that Euros trophy. What was it? 20? Was it 16, Euros? Or? Yeah, 2016. Yeah, 2016, yeah. You know, people forget that still, but it's because he didn't play in the finals, right? But, hey, man, now that's true, though. They're always trying to find a, a, a did, way to this guy. You know, he subbed out because he was injured. Yeah, well, yeah, I'm saying he didn't, he didn't, he wasn't the winning. Yeah, who, yeah, was, yeah. who was the winner? Um, Forget who was the winner there for, but, no, nah, I mean, Portugal is, a, Portugal is a favorite that I, for me personally, my favorite, I'm giving it to Spain. I've been saying it for weeks, Spain will do a Mazda. They made it to the semifinals in the last Euros, and they had a young team. And if you can make it to semifinals with Morata as your number nine, you deserve to win the whole thing. You deserve to win the whole That's dang thing. Show. That's a good show. You know, and um, obviously, young player of the year, Yamal, player of the tournament, though, for real. I'm, I, I'm thinking that player of the tournament probably be a Pedri. I'm not going to lie. I feel like this is a resurgence a lot of people forgot how good Pedri is. You know, it just uh, on the Pedri or Ritz, not going to lie. Ritz even too. He's, he's been getting disrespected. You see the ball on the or odds, this and that guy's not even top five. Guy's not even top three. That's disrespectful. That's disrespectful. I'm not going to lie. Byron Leverkusen, they, they lost one, one game. They lost Champions one game. It's because Champions League plays a big part in the, but he, the Ballon d'Or. It's not his fault that he that the, the team wasn't on the Champions League the last season. You know what I'm saying? But I feel like he's going to come use this tournament and just, oh, all that disrespect, all that, all that, uh, all that foolery that people were having on him for the longest time, not giving him the, I mean, this whole year, you don't even hear about Florian Ritz. And Florian Ritz has been one of the best players in the world. That's what the bottom of the or is. You give it to the best players in the world, yeah. you know? And yeah, for me, I feel like, yeah, him, him, um, him, Pedri have the best opportunity here in this, and just because they have so much to prove as well. Um, you know, Dark Horse, yeah, that was a good one though for Hungary. Yo, yeah, you never look at Hungary. That was yeah. a good Dark Horse right there, still, because I'm thinking more Croatia, but Croatia ain't even a Dark Horse. They made it to the World Cup final in these last 10 years. They've made it to the, I swear they've made it deep in the Euros in these last 10 years as well. You know, so it's not really that they're going to be a Dark Horse. Um, just Euros, but the last two World Cups, so what? They finished top three. Yeah, they feel pretty. They have a good side there. Croatia does still, and at the end of the day, for me too, I, I feel like that Modric, that Modric element of it all won't even be as prevalent as as it was in previous. I mean, Modric is old, and Modric was their best player. So for me, Croatia though, I, like I was gonna say, but I don't even think they're gonna make it that far this 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 Euros. Everyone's thinking they're gonna make it that this far that far. I don't even think so. I'm not gonna lie. I'm not gonna lie. Dark horse though. I really like if I'm deep in it, I'm really trying to think about it. I don't even know. I really don't even know. Would give it to like a team like Switzerland. They're trash. Not gonna do nothing for me. <laughs> not gonna do nothing for me. I'll give it to Georgia though. Georgia with Capistalia. Um, you know, just to win a few games, upset a few people. Make it to the round of 16. That's, 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 that's how much I think they're going to, you know, that's more than I think a lot of people are expecting from them. So, you know, all right. All right. To, you know, switch over this convo. Um, I think I finished it up with the Euro talk there. You know, I feel like you had a little bit more insight. As the Euros go on as well, though, we'll talk about the games going on and yeah, all like of that, you know, as they go on every day. Even have a few live streams, this and that. You know, you guys could be able to watch along with me and my bro. Um, but I wanted to get into before we end off this episode into the whole Caitlin Clark WNBA thing and everybody that's watched sports. I mean, you know what's going on. You actually like there's no way that you don't know what's going on. It's like you're living under a rock, even if you don't watch sports. It's all over social media. It's on the shade room. It's on CNN. We're talking about like different like this is this is 
groundbreaking sports news nowadays. But, you know, there's a lot to cover with Caitlin Clark. Let me just, I'll throw it over to you, fam, and just just say what you want to cover, fam. Or you know what? Let me let me start. Let me start. Because on the thing where I feel like I have a lot to say for it. First, like, I don't want to get myself too mixed up. But, like, first, let's start off. Let's start off with, um, you know, the the elephant in the room with the whole Caitlin Clark thing. She's been trash. She's been trash. And then when you watch a man like Stephen A. Smith, Shannon Sharp, all they're talking about, oh, marketability. And you have to understand where they're coming from, too. You know, because when we talk about the Olympic team, when we talk about this and that, you have to understand that they're coming from a point of they want the WNBA to grow as well. And also because ESPN is making them say all those things. It's not even like that's probably their opinion. I'm not going to lie because half of it, you listen to it and it just doesn't make any sense. It feels so generic. It feels like a computer wrote it. But for me, she's been trash. She doesn't have any basketball IQ other than chalk it up from three after you take a step back. And that's not even, I'm not even trying to bash on her because at the end of the day, she's a rookie. Averaging 16 points per game, even though she's averaging like eight turnovers or something. That's like a, a record for a rookie to average that many turnovers. It's because they continue to put the ball in her feet or in her hands. You know what I'm saying? Where um, for me, in my opinion, is it's her coach putting her in these bad positions. There is no reason Caitlin Clark should have the highest usage on the team day one. Aaliyah Boston, she was a former number one overall pick as well. You could have ran the ball through her a little bit while Caitlin learned. Nah, nah, she's a big. But the thing about it is like, bro, Aaliyah Boston in their win yesterday, I forget who they played. Oh, they played Atlanta Fever. Aaliyah Boston had like 27, 8, <laughs> 5. Caitlin Clark had 7 and 7 turnovers. Like, Yeah, but you look at like the first picks that are always guards in, N- in both NBA and WNBA. Mm. They probably have the most usage rate the first year. John Moran, Luca, Anthony Edwards. They That's a good argument, though. Most- That's a yeah. good argument. But at the end, at the same time, though, those guys knew how to get, like, I mean, Luca is an exception because he played professional ball before as I well. I feel so. like you're being, like, too harsh on her. Just give her, like, she's a rookie at the end of the year. No, nah, but that's what I'm saying, though. Her. Maybe she's not ready for the spotlight. But that's what I'm saying, though. To- I'm not even being harsh on her. I'm being harsh on the coach. Her coach has put her in this spot where she can't succeed in the spot she's at, bro. She has the ball in her hands too much. She's weak, and she doesn't have the ball IQ to be able to get out of those um, situations with without strength, with just basketball skill, because it's not yeah. college no more. So and she's her gonna co- build her up, you know. I guess, I guess that too, build you know. Her up into the way that she's supposed to be, because like, nothing is like given you gotta earn it now nah, that's like, true it's not like she just wants to go out there and just well, be given like 25 points a night you look at the year all that you know she doesn't just want a usa spot what did she say after she didn't get the usa spot that's the thing though bro i don't even know fam you expect her to come say like i mean her words seem like bro her publicist or whoever is writing her, down her lines needs to make it more human like because that's what I feel like a, a lot of people aren't like they just not connecting with what she's saying. Mm-hmm. Like they, she's saying all these things and they feel like, Oh, like she's not saying it from like, they just, it doesn't feel genuine. Me too. I watch and I'm like, yo, Caitlin, is this you talking? Like say what you feel about, like say what you're really thinking about. Okay. They say she USA spot came and everybody in the comments was like, Oh, she's going to be da 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 da. She better be grateful that she didn't, she's been trash. Da, da, da. Of course she's going to come out and say, Oh, that, you know, I wish them the best for me personally, though, I would have taken the Anthony Edwards route. I would have been like, to be honest, I didn't see anybody that was better than me. I would have, I would have been like, yo, they'll see me again in four years. Nah, but That's the best way to see it. The thing but is they would have gotten on her if she said that, though. They would have gotten yeah, on her. Because there are players that are better than Super, her. super. It's not like, you know. She's not playing that well, too. That's the thing, too. But at the end of the day, you, you come with the realness of the confidence. And if she said that, and if she was real with it, I'm not saying that, like, this is what she should have said. I'm saying this is what I would have said. Me being real, if I'm in her position, I would have been like, you'll see me in four years. There's no way nobody could take another spot off me, despite the bad performances she's given in this last month or month and a half, whatever the WNBA has been on. Yeah. But 
You look at everything else. I mean, she's shooting around with her boyfriend after the game, and man's are coming. That's why the WNBA doesn't like her. <laughs> and yo, know, when you think about it, you know, I don't, I don't know, I don't, I don't know how much hold to wait to hold to put on this, you know. But like, it's like, I don't know. Even on the, the point where we're talking about the WNBA not liking Caitlin Clark, it's like, bro, this is a this is a league that man, somebody comes into your house and says that they built it, this and that. Of course you'd be cheese too. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? It's that competitive fire and that and I feel like man's putting too much, too much thought process or too much thinking into oh, they don't like Caitlin Clark. Bro, nobody liked LeBron. <laughs> they still played. Everybody was still out here playing basketball. How many people do you think like Wendy fam? Like nah, people like Wendy. Nah, fam, not like that, fam. People that aren't in the game, fam. People that, and maybe LeBron, because LeBron's basically retired from that guy's just, he's just playing ball now, fam. It's basically retired. He's just grabbing his check now, fam. But everybody, I'm telling you, fam, like on a real thing, fam, John Morant trying to dunk on him. Anthony, like not, not that they don't like him as a person, but basketball wise, it's like, yo, I could get you. You ain't that good, this and that, like a competitive fire in their head saying, hey, man. This is ball, fam. This is all that thing that they were talking up about you being the best prospect ever. I'm about to show you. That's on the like. That's basketball. That's sports, bro. If you take that out of sports, what what sense does it even make? Telling everybody to conform to Caitlin Clark and say, oh, you know, baby her basically. Be like, okay, then it's okay. This and that. Nah, she's not gonna grow from doing that. Yeah, she's not gonna grow from from getting all this special treatment. Even though she's the breadwinner in the league, everybody. <laughs> The league did is yeah, the WNBA has never been as talked about as it is right now. And there's been better rookies, there's been better players, there's been better everything. But Caitlin Clark does bring eyes to the league. Good or bad, she does it. But at the end of the day, you cannot come and say trying to take the sports out of the sport, because then at the end of the day, you get what everybody's been saying that they've had for years, and it's a glorified it's not a sport, bro. It's not a sport, you know. But, you know, for me, for me, I appreciate all that she's done. I appreciate that, like, you know, she's handled it uh, in a different way. Because even what happened a few days ago where she's talking to the media and then she says that she can't control what people say or how they use her name. And then everybody's getting back at her being like, yo, well, how is that how you're going to respond? And then she had to come back a few hours later saying, da, 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 um, of course, I don't want anybody to use my name to condone racism, misogyny, this and that. They're bullying her, fam. <laughs> they are bullying her. But at the end of the day, I feel like Caitlyn got to get a thicker skin. Caitlyn can't be listening to all these little voices on the outside, turning on ESPN and this and that. And nah, you got to go out there. You got to drop 50. Got to drop 50. I'm 50% shooting. Stop the playing around. It's because she's having too much things going around in her mind, in her personal life. And she's probably never had to deal with it before. That she's dropping seven points on 20% shooting with eight, eight turnovers or something like that. It's because of that. And I feel like she just got to focus on ball still. Maybe when she focuses on ball, she'll get back to being Caitlin Clark. You know what I'm saying? You got any thoughts on that? Any final thoughts on that? No. Nah. Nah, no final thoughts on that. Yeah, and I just, I mean, they're basically bullying her. But, hey, this is sports, bro. If you allow yourself to get bullied, you will get bullied. That's just how it is. It's been from the dawn of time. We're talking gladiators, fam. Gladiators in Rome. If if you come up against the top dog that's been in this coliseum and he's been fighting and you're a new rookie and they're saying you're going to beat the top dog, the top dogs are going to try and bully you. <laughs> He's going to bully you because he's like, no way you're better than me. But that that new that, that new bull has to prove his worth at the end of the day. And I feel like that's what, you know, Caitlin Clark's going to do, going to prove her worth as she moves on in the WNBA. Um, yeah, happy to be back, man. Happy to be back. This has been the Game Time Gazette. This has been Isaiah Nenny. This has been Paul Nenny joining yeah. me as well. Got anything to say, fit, uh, you know, end off? Nah, a pleasure for having me. Pleasure to being here. Thank you for listening. Yeah. Yeah. And if you're still listening, remember Jesus loves you. Yeah. You know, at the end of the day, you know, whatever your thing you're going through, whatever thing you're dealing with, it's nothing at the end of the day. 
in the big scheme of things. It might not feel like nothing, but it is nothing. Always remember that. And um, until the next, um, as I sit here watching the first half of the NBA Finals wind down, Dallas up by 10, playing a pretty great game. Luka, Kyrie, both. Um, Kyrie, no, Kyrie's at nine. Luka's at 10, double digits. Ooh, P.J. Washington just hit a great three. I say this all to preface what I'm about to say, you know, because obviously editing the video with me and my brother today, um, I wanted to add in this part at the end, you know, through all of it. Um, I do hope Dallas wins so we still see more NBA basketball. And it's not just, you know, Euros and WNBA. Love the NBA. Want Oilers to win as well. But that's not what I'm about to talk about. I'm talking about, um, you know, the break that I've taken, you know, this little hiatus from this podcast um, and just everything that's been going on mentally, because I feel like, you know, you see it in every video and it's true, though. It's true, especially when you're going through it. You see somebody else say they said it because, you know, hopefully somebody out there sees this. And if they're going through something, they know that they'll be able to get better from it. And Honestly, that's the reason I put this on here because somebody else, I seen it from somebody else's video. And I just want to say, you know, with whatever life has thrown at you at this moment, know that you, know that first, actually, know that God loves you. Jesus loves you as well. You know, when it feels like you're alone and there's nobody there for you, I'm telling you, you don't have to be religious to call on to God. At the end of the day, he's your maker. And he's a very merciful guy. You just think about, I mean, all the things that he could have just thrown you to the side for, for what you've done in your life. And um, he hasn't. I promise you he has not. See, if he hasn't put me to the side, no matter what you've done, I mean, unless you've killed someone. <laughs> Even then, though, he says there's forgiveness for everyone, and everyone does deserve forgiveness. End of the day, nobody can tell you that. So find God. Secondly, I want to say that whatever you're going through, man, it does not matter. <laughs> you are a speck of dust and the most, I mean, just, you can't even imagine. Like, it's so crazy that you can't even imagine how big the universe is and if you put your problems out there to the universe i'm telling you it'll go on to dead space there's like there's nobody and nothing out there that will listen to it why because it does not matter i'm not trying to say that your problems you know don't care about them and this and that and the whole cliche of move on because it's hard to when you're going through it and everybody will tell you the same thing but they tell you it because it's true, because there's nothing else and there's no way else to convey it. The truth of that it just does not matter. One, life goes on. Two, you will move on. You will get better. It's not the end of the world unless you make it the end of the world. Some people make it the start of their world, the start of their dreams. Why not you as well? And with that, because I don't want to be too long-winded, it's been the Game Time Gazette. I hope to hear you. I hope to have you listening here, you know, next time out. And, yeah, I love you. Remember, Jesus loves you too.